G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Heat One Motorsports Podcast. Uh, just a quick reminder out there to uh, all the listeners that there is still some merch available uh, to purchase. Uh, we still got jumpers available. I know it's coming into the uh, the Australian summer, but uh, for all the the UK uh, listeners, uh, there's plenty of uh, plenty of beanies uh, still available, and some jumpers in certain sizes are still available, guys. So if you want to grab some grab some Heat One merch, uh, make sure to, to jump on our Instagram or on our Facebook uh, and shoot us a DM of of what you'd like. Um, all the pictures and everything of what they all look like. Uh, are up on our socials uh, or feel free to email us and I can send you through a list of sizings and everything to uh, uh, email us at heat1motorsports at gmail.com. We'll sort you out. But um, yeah, coming into summer now for all the Aussies out there, uh, singlets, hats uh, still available, some shirts still available. So if you want uh, any merch coming into summer, um, yeah, feel free to, to hit us up, shoot us a message, and we will definitely sort you out. Make sure you guys are looking phenomenal coming into the uh, Australian summer. Um, but today, gosh, I'm so excited to bring you this episode. Um, I had a great chat with uh, the big show, one of the most entertaining riders in the UK currently, um, the great man, Josh Pickering. Uh, mate, fantastic chat uh, with Josh about his life, his journey. Uh, his career in Speedway, but also life away from Speedway. It was very um, eye-opening uh, into uh, – he's, he's been through some stuff. He's had some health issues to start with. He's quite new to Speedway. He started quite late. Um, so, yeah, great chat, guys. Really hope you enjoy. Uh, and here's my chat with uh, the great Joshy Pickering. How long have you been back for now? I flew in uh, last Tuesday, so two weeks tomorrow. Yeah, right. Yeah, and first thing you noticed, was it the weather? Was it nice Mate, coming out from, so from Edinburgh? In, no, one of your good mates, um, he come pick me up yeah, on the Tuesday night mm. and then, um, yeah, got home. Didn't get home till about quarter past 11. Yep. Went sort of straight to bed and then I uh, went to bed about midnight and I was up at, you know, quarter past two, standard. Yeah, and then, of course. Um, I tried to, you know, toss and turn, tried to settle down, but mm. wasn't happening and then... Um, yeah, next thing you know, I was wide awake, and mm. me and Brooke were mum and dad's recently renovated the house, so yeah, okay. Uh, there was quite a fair few boxes, all our clothes and things like that were still packed away. So we're going through boxes at three o'clock in the oh. morning, trying to find everything that we sort of gonna need straight away. Yeah, and yeah. My, my training gear actually usually a ritual for me. As soon as I get home, mm. I um follow morning, I get up and go straight up the mountain at, at the Waddingtons. Yeah, it's just something I like doing, mm. and um, so yeah, I had to, had to find on my hiking kit. Right. Yeah. Get get the old uh, get the old Nikes out and the the the, the gym tights or whatever yeah, they are the yeah. sport shorts. Had the old Nike the old boots out. They they do the job just nicely. So yeah, me and my uncle went up there. And, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, it was, it was good fun. I can I like I I've I've been jet lagged before, but it was so long ago. Like yeah. as a kid, you just I just slipped it off. Like, yeah, you, you, know, you had no responsibilities. But like yourself, you know, you, you're coming home. I could just imagine. You, you, all you wanted to do was sleep, but at two in the morning and you're wide awake, I couldn't think of anything worse. Yeah, it's it's a different one. Like it's weird. So I get towards the end of the season, obviously, yeah. and then we start looking to to come home. And and when we get home, it's just I'm that excited to be here. It's the first time in seven years that I've flown in into the night time. I usually oh, land true. at say six in the morning. Yeah, and then right. Put it put in a good stint all day, and mm. you know catch up with everyone, keep busy, and you're obviously excited to be home. Mm. So. You can make it last as long as possible, and then, you know, I crash out hard that night. Be up early again the following mm. morning, and, and get so on. But this time it's, um, yeah, I'd, I'd I'd get home and like sorry, I, I was up at two o'clock, mm. and I was I was up at two o'clock until nine p.m. the following day. Oh so, shit! Yeah, yeah, well. I, I didn't I didn't want to have a sleep throughout mm. the day and. We're like and a zombie, then, mate. Yeah, she was. Um, <laughs> but you're running on a high. You're excited yeah. to be home. You're seeing everyone, so it wasn't too bad. A well deserved break, obviously. Yeah, it's yeah. literally it was four days later, mm. right? When I've seen everyone, I've done all my things. We went for some breakfast with a couple of friends in you know, mm. Maitland, and then when I got home, I had nothing to do until the afternoon. And yeah, right. All of a sudden, I was like, far out. I could do with a sleepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put myself to bed and woke up four hours later. Yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. Um, yeah, it can sometimes it, it can knock you around, but yeah. I feel like. I don't let my body rest sometimes mm. when, when I do need it. And right. then all of a sudden it's like, hey, you need mm. to go to sleep for a bit. So mm. and then I do so. But um, I don't like wasting the sun, mm. mate. It's it's unbelievable. It's mm. the weather we get to experience here. How 
Australia just as it is, mm. how it is. It's just there's no country that competes, in my opinion. Oh. So, um, mate, we live in the best place in the world. I, yeah, we've got the like you know, especially here, like this Hunter yeah. Valley, like Lake Macquarie got region, the bush, the beaches, all within half hour. Exactly, yeah. and if you're really keen, you got six hours down to the snow. Yeah, so like I. Mate, I just would not want to go anywhere else. Yeah, no, I, I'm happy, yeah. Apart from, I will admit, apart from Sweden, yep. that was a fucking cracking place to grow up. Yeah. Super safe. Yeah. Like, I remember in the middle of summer, sun didn't go down to like 11 o'clock. Yeah, that's what I love about the UK and things like that as well. It's yeah. Like where I live, it's not so much 11, but when I lived in Scotland, yep. um, I was there for like four years and... Um, yeah, their, their son don't seem to disappear. And yeah, right. She, uh, she sort of hangs around 10 o'clock at night and mm. then... Four o'clock, it's you know, sun's rising again. So, yeah. um, just a shock to the system, especially like your first season over yeah. there. Like, what the fuck's going on here? Your body well, clock will be all screwed up. It was, mate, when I, when I went, landed there on the first of March, it was 2017. Myself, Sam, well, me, Brooke, Sam Tegan, uh, and Bevo actually. Oh, yeah. He came over was for when Doily's wedding was. Yep. So, yep. he came over with us and spent a couple of weeks and then he went to Doily's wedding and things like that. So, we all traveled over together and then. You know, we all experienced jet lag. Mm. They've obviously been there years before, but, um, yeah, when we got there and got stuck into it, it was like, it was freezing about three degrees yeah. and um, miserable, cold, mm. rainy. <laughs> that, time of worse. Year, that time of year, there's no sun really in yeah. Scotland. It's like, you you know, so it's like far out. This is what I'm, you know, this is what I'm coming into. And it literally took like three years, mate, for me to understand and adapt and... Acclimatise Yeah, to but it. Not, not feel like you're... Somewhere else, like yeah, right. You know, when I'm here right now, I know I'm home. Mm. And then when I'm over there, I just felt like everywhere I went, I was foreign. And yeah, I just, of course. I never felt comfortable in that sense. But mm. um, that's another reason I don't like moving about with clubs. Like yep. 2017, um, Edinburgh is you know the first club that sort of contacted me, mm. and and that's where I've been since. So yep. I've done 17, 18, 19, 20 because of COVID, no yep. one race, but I was signed up to go there. Sure. And then I've done 21, 22, 23. So um, mm. Yeah, I've been there a long time and I have enjoyed nearly every moment of it. I just yeah. wish we could uh, win a few more trophies. Yeah. And I was going to bring it up later on, but I may as well ask you now, mate, was it emotional calling it quits and making that? Obviously, you would have had a sat down with Brooke and had a long, hard chat about all that and, and calling it quits in Edinburgh, which you called, you called home for a long time. Man, that must have been tough. Yeah, well, to be honest, mate, I, I feel as if I could have went back on my word a bit already yeah, at the minute. Right. Um just with how things are working out, I was I was putting all my eggs in the Polish basket, and I wanted to give myself a good crack out there. But um, unfortunately, I, I didn't. It was down to me, but I didn't have the the best of endings to my Polish season this year. Um, one, I was a little bit unlucky with, with my bike, and then the second meeting, it was you know it was right of error, and I I started with the wrong setup, and in the playoffs, and that's it. That's how it is, mate. Mm. If you're not winning your first one, you're out. So yeah. Uh, they pulled me out of my last two rides at both my last two matches, and I was obviously very disappointed with that. But um, it's the way it goes sometimes. Yep. And yeah, so with how busy my schedule is usually in the UK with racing two leagues and then trying to race abroad as well. And I was also in Denmark this year. And uh, when I got injured, I, I missed seven meetings for Denmark, yep. ended up missing eight or nine meetings for Kings Lynn. Mm -hmm. Very similar for um, Edinburgh, and I missed seven Polish matches. So, like, it was a third of my season, mate, yeah. that got wiped out yeah. in the first six weeks, you know. The, well, sorry, nine weeks it end up being, but mm. I missed 30-odd matches. And, um, yeah, that wasn't that wasn't cool. But, uh, yeah, in this current moment right now, um, yeah, I'm not I'm not fixed up in Poland. I'm not in yeah. negotiations with anyone in Poland for next year. So, yeah, okay. uh, if, you know... How things are looking in this current moment. If if it's not changing, I will um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I will have to more than likely race championship again because yeah, okay. there's no point going over there to race one league. Sure. Like you need to be on the bike all the time. You yep. need to be fighting fit and you need to be race sharp. So um, me living in the UK, mm -hmm. based pretty much right in the central there now. Um, yeah, it's, it makes a lot of sense for me to race both leagues. Yep. But uh, yeah, just. With how the it would have worked out if I was to be in Denmark and Poland, yep. it would have been a lot harder to, to manage. So, yeah, of um, course. yeah, right now it yeah I might be going going back there yet, but uh, yeah, I'm in I'm in discussion. I'm, I'm not guaranteed which club I'm riding for, right. but yeah, uh, yeah, I may have to race yeah the second tier again. Yeah, okay. And you know, you raced for Rabbits before yep. uh, uh, before moving to Nezhno. Like I I've never I, I've been to Poland and I've seen it, but not for many years. The 
just from what I've been told and what the boys have said, like just the quality and the professionalism and going to Poland is just such a different beast. How how would you put it in your own words of how that, that big jump is? Yeah, well, in saying that, I've I've only had to experience the second division in Poland. Yep. So uh, for what I can put it to, to the UK, they're, they're not doing anything more special in that regard. Yeah, okay. But extra league or first division, I, I believe they're doing a lot bigger things. Yep. As far as like the quality of how it's ran, the people that's involved, there's certain clubs that are great. There's other clubs that aren't. Uh, regardless of what league it is, it's just how it is, unfortunately. But, um, you know, there's no set standard and that's how every club runs. Mm-hmm. If that was the case, things would be a lot easier. Yeah, but, um, yeah, like the the clubs that I've experienced so far, like I, I signed for Krosno in 2018. Oh, yep. Uh, that was my first Polish club. And then... Wasn't too bad. I didn't get used until the last two matches of the season, the yep. playoff semi final. And was that in League Two back yep, then? Yeah, yep. yep. and I, we raced against Big Gosh, yep. and um, yeah, what did I, I think I got nine or I think I got twenty points from first from the two matches. Oh, so okay. both yep. home and away. I think I got yeah eleven and nine or nine then eleven. I can't remember, mm. but um, yeah. So that was that was my first experience of Poland. Mm. Following year, that must have been 2019, sorry. And then the following year, I was going to go back there and, and then we obviously experienced COVID. Yes. And then uh, we, I went over at the start of the season. I literally flew in on the Friday morning at lunchtime and I was back at Edinburgh Airport on Saturday morning at lunchtime and flew out Saturday evening. Yeah, so right, okay. Just without, I was unbeknown, unbeknown to anything over here. Of course. And then next thing you know, Trump's on about, Bloody <laughs> America's <laughs> shutting their gates, yeah, and yeah. then Sweden was doing a similar thing, right. and they were talking about, you know, no more than five hundred spectators, and yeah. all these things just snowboard, you know. And and I just said to John, like, look, Brooks currently at home. Mm. I'm not getting stuck here. Yeah, I'll go, and if things change in a month or whatever, yeah. then I'll come back. Mm. And then, um, sure as shit, it, it went worse. Yeah, and then of uh, I end up going back over in June because I had my Polish club hounding me, and yeah. then. You know, me and Brooke end up, you know, I was working full-time here for, for Mark, one of your mates who yep. owns Mechlex. Yep. So, um, yeah, you know Mark. So know Mark's in yeah. the gym fair often. Yeah. Big boy. So, I was, uh, yeah, I was there with him and, and we're working and, yep. and Brooke was working as well. And we were mm. in a position where we we're going to try and buy a house here. And, yeah, right. And then, you know, they're on the phone and, and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, right, well, 90% of the riders that I race against mm. aren't riding. Yeah. They okay. don't have this opportunity that I potentially can have. Mm. Um if I can get out there in Poland and, and prove myself, like prove to everyone that I can, I can do it, yep. then it might be worth going, you know? And, um, unfortunately I got there and then they didn't want to use me. Even I was doing practice and I was beating Fuck, the riders. I had to compete, mate. Yeah. <laughs> with, with mate, much, I can imagine the head noise, mate. Oh, we moved over there and like me and Brooke yeah, at this time, we've never, we've never had a, a place of our own. So our first actual apartment for us to live in together was in Poland. Yeah. Right. In Krosno. Would have been tricky um, with just language barriers and all that sort of shit. Yeah, especially the Krosno where it is as well. It's not like a big city. So oh, okay. Not, it was very limited English-speaking English, yeah. English speaking people. So it was, it was just me and Brooke all the time, mm. you know. and um, Smashing Google Translate, no doubt. Yeah, <laughs> very, very much. So, um, yeah, it just it didn't work out. Simple as that. We got stuck there and had to come home. And then we quarantined in Perth and then... Oh, just shit fight, mate. It, it was, was a shit yeah. fight, and it, it's something. Everything happens for a reason. Mm. I've always lived by that, but it's hard to take sometimes when we could have put ourselves in a very nice position right now, especially with our our COVID houses yep. have gone up. Yeah, you know, like hundred percent. We would have been laughing, but mm. um, yeah, it wasn't meant to be. So mm. yeah, fast forward another another year, I was back over there, and and then I, I found myself riding for Ganeshno. Yep, um, that was in twenty twenty two. Me and Sam were there, and Dougie. Yep. And we had a good season, all three of us. And, um, yeah, Dougie stayed back there this year and myself and Sam moved on to Ganeshno. Yeah. Um, Dougie had a good year, mm. as did Sam. And I, I was obviously I had my injury at the mm. start of the year and it took me a little bit to get going. And um, you know, at the end of the day, it don't matter how good you are, if your bikes aren't, exactly. you know, doing what they need to be doing in Poland, like it mm. is down to bike set up. And, uh, unfortunately, I just – was, I was too inconsistent. Um, so – yeah, it was, and that was a lot to do with my reasoning of thinking, right? Oh, do I knock Edinburgh on the head? Yeah, put all my eggs in the Polish basket, and and go out there, do start of the season testing, mm-hmm. do whatever I've got to do, prove myself I can be in the team. Yeah, practice whenever they want, 
and know that when I'm on that bike, I'm confident. So yeah, uh, that's that's what I was going to do. But unfortunately, in this current time, I I don't have that opportunity. Yeah, right. And yeah. it's yeah, it's tough. It's it, and that's the the love hate relationship in in being a being a motorcyclist trying to get signed by clubs. You know, you, you've got so much success at Edinburgh. Um, it it would be a shame. Like obviously, you're a very well liked figure in Edinburgh. The Monarch fans absolutely love you. They reckon you're the most entertaining, entertaining spur rider they've seen in a long time. Mm. And they also like it when you don't make the start. Yeah. So you could you got four laps to wind up and and do your oh, thing. Oh, me first, say four years type thing. That's the first. That's the only thing they would say. Oh, if only you could make the gate. I'm like, <laughs> well, you wouldn't be talking about me if I did. You know. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. Sam would be going out trapping and mm. you know scoring a whole lot of points. But I was the one they were talking about mm. because you know. Mm. I was doing the crazy stuff from behind, but um, yeah, it's something I have worked on mm. over the years, and um, I've I have definitely gotten better. Yeah, and uh, some certain things you just you either have or you don't have, and mm. other things you got to work for. So, um, I'd much rather instead of it sounds silly, but like I know my gating will come, mm -hmm. where you can't just some kids can make a start, but yep. they can't do what I can do on a track. Sure. So, um, if if that's just my, I know, I know it is a, a big thing in Speedway currently, but it's only a little thing in the whole in the whole big scheme of things. So I know I can put the bike wherever I want and, and try and get it to hook up when yep. needed. I've got very good race craft. It's something mm -hmm. I've worked on for many years, and and um, yeah, I just I'm starting to find something that is working for me from mm. the start, feeling comfortable, um, confident, knowing what to do, and things like that. So. Yeah, we'll just keep working and mm. keep trying and, yeah, hopefully we can get there. Good shit. And, I mean, you with Sheffield, you had a, a killer end to the year. Yeah. Uh, mate, that uh, final, the second leg of that final, man, I was just on the edge of my seat. It was – and I was on, – I'm a mutual fan. Yeah, I'm a mutual yeah. fan. I don't really – I, I just whoever like because all you Aussie boys, I just support that team. Yeah, you know, if there's Aussies versus Aussies, I couldn't care less. You know, it was it was nice to see Doyley and Keenan, you know, versus yourself and Chris. Like I yeah. was, you know, I was happy either way. But then when you wound up and wound up and and took Doyley on the outside, that was man, mm. it was a bit horny, really. Yeah, <laughs> it was unreal. <laughs> yeah, you did. Like, you left a bit too much room yeah. for me. Mm. Um, yeah, I looked. Track was quite difficult for the playoffs, both home and away. Mm. Uh, when we went to Ipswich, it was, she was technical. She was rough. There was mm. a few holes. Doyle and Emil are unbelievable around there. Mm. Denny King's been there for God knows how many years. Mm. Keenan, he's you know he's coming along. He's, he's going very well for a young Aussie rider. He's going to have a, a very bright future ahead, in my opinion. Um, and the rest of their team, uh, they nothing against them, but mm. looking at one to seven on our team, like. Yeah, they had Doyley, they had Emil, they had Denny King and they had Keenan. Yeah. But then when you look at our seven and you had like bloody well, our number one was Robert Lambert at the yeah, time. Yeah. And we had Kyle Howworth. We had Chris at three, myself at four, five, we had Bomber Guest for us at home. Yeah. Six, we had Joy Etheridge, and seven we had Jason Edwards. Yeah. So when I looked at our team one to seven, mm. I thought we can beat them. And and even if when we like had to verse Doyley and Emil as long as them races weren't a heat advantage, yep. bang in a 3-3, three, three, that's sure. all that's required. Yep. We can make up the ground in the other races. So how it was started off, we, we obviously started off, I think, with a was either 3-3 three, three or 4-2 to them. Um, yep. Kyle was in, no, it was it was a 3-3, three, three, sorry. Kyle was in a very good position, Liam was out in front, and then, um, yeah, him and Emil sort of come together and he, he laid it down, and then we bounced out and got a 5-1 in heat two. Yep. Me and Chris bounced out and got a 4-2 in heat three. Yep. Got another five one in eight four. Me and Chris went out again, eight five, another five one. Mm. And mate, the momentum shifted at this yeah. stage. And um yeah, we get to heat nine and I knew it was gonna be a tough one, but I thought if we can get a heat advantage out of this, mm. that's it. Like it's the it's it's ours to lose then because the momentum shifted, as I said, and um if you're going out and you know, in heat five, me and me and Chris done a five one against Emil, and then I thought if one of us can beat Doyley in heat nine, yep. then the other riders that make up their team are looking at them going, fucking hell, like our top two boys just yeah. have been pipped. It's a lot of pressure put down on yeah. them boys. So then yeah. they start scratching their head then mm. thinking, oh, if he can, you know, if he can't beat him, mm. how are we going to beat him? It's all a mind game, yeah. you know. So, mate, I knew if, from when we left on Tuesday night, it was if we started the meeting like we did, yeah. uh, my, my prediction actually was by heat eight, I reckon we yeah. would be winning. Yeah, and right. I think it was heat nine. It's pretty fucking close. Yeah, yeah, I was close. So, um, 
yeah, and then it w- oh, yeah, it was a nail bite and mm. finish. It was awesome, and I actually haven't experienced them emotions like that mm. within Speedway and yeah, okay, and within a very long time. Like, was um, that your first major title? Yep. Yeah. Oh, I was in Premiership. Yeah, League, Premiership. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, um, no, it was pretty special. Actually, mm. it's just. It's very surreal to think, like, say, 10 years ago and I was watching these guys on TV of a yeah. Tuesday night and just thinking, like, wow, you know, yeah. like, this is awesome. This is what <laughs> yeah. I want to be doing. And then yeah. now I'm sort of racing with them, mixing it with them, beating them. And, mm. you know, it's just, for me, it's a bit like, far out, right, this is happening. Yeah. At the same time, I've worked very hard to be where I am now as yeah. well. So it's it's a bit rewarding. Yeah. I um like it's 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 awesome to see you know Robert come back and and do a couple of meetings for Kingsley and, and then he, he filled in for you guys having that number one is obviously a big confidence boost, mm. but then you're literally in between Bomber Harris and Chris Holder, so like two of the most experienced blokes in the Premiership. Yeah. That must have been just uh, just such confidence boost for you. Yeah, well. That was part of my decision, like when things sort of ended how they did with uh, Kings Lynn mm. at the start of the year, and like I, I had the opportunity to go to Ipswich as well. Yep. Um, so that yeah, there was four clubs I could have potentially went to, and logistically, Sheffield worked out the best. Mm. Um, I was then thinking that you know I spoke to Doyley quite a bit at this time, and and he was wanting me to come to Ipswich with him, and and then I was thinking oh to go and learn off Emil and Doyley like that'd be awesome as yeah, well, of you know, and then. I thought to myself at the same time, like Jack Alder's yep. up there right now. I think he was number two in, yeah, the, in he, the placings at yeah, that point. So yeah, so he's, he's obviously killing it. Um, I raced with Jack in 2021, and yep. I know I can I can learn certain things off him, and, and even just by watching him, mate, mm-hmm. don't even have to have a conversation, but just sure. seeing what he does, like he's yeah, he's pretty fast at the mm-hmm. minute. So yep. um, yeah, I was off someone like him, and then and Tobias Musliak, yep. and you know, I, I and then not only that. I looked at the team, how it was, and and I did actually think to myself, well, unfortunately, like Frenchy, nothing against him. He's a great bloke. He's a good yep. friend of mine, but um, he wasn't going very great in yep. England. Yep. And a lot of their matches that how everyone else sort of done their job, if Frenchy was to get five or six points, yep. they wouldn't, Sheffield wouldn't have been, wouldn't have lost a match, sure. you know? Yep. So, yep. and I had this conversation with Damien. I said, look, mate, like the other team that you have right now, mm. don't get me wrong, that it's, we lead uh, league winning material, yep. mm. but you are missing something, and I believe that I can be that missing piece, yep. and and um, that was sort of you know the how we sort of come to come to what we did. I'm not saying that I, I won the league for us at all, yep. but in saying that as well, with the team that they currently had, they wouldn't have won the league. So yep. I definitely did pay, play my part, and I come in and you know I, put, I think I put a point and a half on my average, and yeah, good um, stuff. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I done my job, and then mm. especially when it come to the playoffs time, that's that's the important stuff. And, yeah, um, I think I got you know paid nineteen or something like that from yeah. the two matches, so I can't complain. And I, I can only imagine you know your first major trophy in the Premiership, the the the, the party and go on well into the hours of the night, nah. into the next day. Well, well I, I guess you don't, you don't yeah, drink. No, nah, I'm not a drinker, so mm. I. Look, I was happy. It, it took a few days for it to sink in. Yeah. What actually happened? Yeah. I'd, um, my mechanic, uh, his his partner, yeah. Rhea and yep. and Brooke, they they all got on it. Had a bit of a crack, and um, <laughs> as they should. Yeah, and then we we got back to the house. I only live thirty five minutes from Sheffield, yep. so they were all pretty pissed by the time we got home. <laughs> and then yeah, we got home at midnight and got them up into bed and got showered or whatever. And yeah, me and Ryan went back down, sat on the couch and watched it all over again. Yeah, right. You know, like oh, just, good stuff. Yeah, so just living in that current moment on that on that high, you know, and yeah. watched the meeting back over. And then the following morning, I woke up and went straight to Heat 5, yeah, watched Heat okay. 9, yep. watched Heat 14, you yeah, know. The, yeah. It was just, uh, I couldn't get enough of watching yeah. it, you know. And, um, yeah, it was pretty special. And, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to be back there again next year. Yeah, 100%. Well, mate, you've had a killer year. You, like, there's highs and lows. We all know what happened at Kings Lynn, but you, you've ended on a highest of highs. Mm. But take me back to a young Pico, where it all started. You know, you're the you're the mayor of, of Head and Greener, as I say. And yeah. I've, I I think I was um I was playing golf. Uh, it was actually a couple of months ago. I think I was playing with Dad, or it might have been Anders, and we were walking up to the 16th tee. Yep. And I'm pretty sure he said, "Oh, I'm pretty sure Pico." Lived yeah, in that, that, that double brick house in the corner there. Yeah, that's us. So yeah. that's where you, you grew up. That's where I live now. Oh, is he still? Oh, so your parents so, are still there. Yeah. So yeah, right. a, directly across the road from where you tee off from the yep. 16th. Yeah. 
directly behind you yep. is where we live currently. Yeah, right. Directly to your left is where I used to live. So, oh, right. Okay. Yeah, I was just down there. So, yeah, true. Um, I grew up there my whole life for, well, until I went overseas in 2017. Yeah, That's okay. when mum and dad moved out of there and moved across the road. Yeah. But, um, yeah, look, for me, racing started. It's, uh, I started off with the Pee Wee 50. I don't... I don't know exactly how old I was. I'd say I would have been five or six. Yeah, okay, so um, quite early. And then, yeah, I sort of started getting around on that all right, yeah. and then it went from that to a TDR90. Yep. Uh, we got that from Watto's. That was my first bike too, actually. Yeah, TDR90. TDR90. Yep. Yep. 2005 model, I think it would yeah, have been. Yeah, th- mine would have been a three, I reckon. Yeah, okay. Just with how it all, yeah, how it all planned out, I think. And then... Um, my cousin, he when I got the TDR ninety, he got a, a KDM sixty five. Oh, okay. Yep. And then uh, we both got it on Christmas, yep. and that would have been two thousand three. Right. Yep. And then, um, yeah. So one into the next year, it was like right. No, that would have, sorry. Yeah. So yeah. So two thousand and two mm. Christmas. Yep. Then we go into the new year. Yeah. Right. So we're in school. I think year three or four or whatever it was, and. Um, yeah, there was a, a guy that used to, to race and mm-hmm. they were friends with my, my cousin's side of the family. Okay, and, yep. And at this age, whatever I done, Matt done. Whatever yeah, Matt done, right. I done. It's mm-hmm. just we've grown up three streets away from each other yep. our whole life. We're practically brothers and, you know, there wasn't something that he was doing that I wasn't or vice versa. And, and he come home from school one day and he, he said to his, his daddy wants to go racing. Yep. So then, sure as shit, our family will always support us whenever we want to do and... And they've taken Matt Matt to Curry Co Junior yep. Motorcycle Club, and and then I um he actually went out for like a, a month. It was like a every second week it was on. Oh, okay, so, yeah, right. Uh, no, it might have been he went out, and then it was three weeks later he was on again. Sure. And then I went and watched this time, and I thought, oh, I'd like to have a go at that. I need to do that. Yeah, yeah. So then I've always been competitive. That's just how it is. But racing side of things, I've grown up riding a dirt bike, and yep. you know nothing flash. So. Uh, we had eight acres there, and I could ride it whenever I wanted to. Yeah, but okay. um, yeah, just yeah, didn't didn't happen a great deal. But um, yeah, so I started that, getting around all right. But I was in the sixty five class, yeah, okay. and then I was just getting blown off the track, mate. Of course, I was showing I could you know do a little bit, but I couldn't do much. Yeah, and then um, thankfully for the for all all the other parents that were actually there, they're like, mate, like you got to give your kid a give, chance. Give him a bigger bike. It was actually Come Mitchell on. Dunlop's dad. Okay. Paul Paul Dunlop. Yeah, he, right. uh, he used to work with Dad and, yep. and another family friend of mine, Tony Pryor. Yep. So um, they were all going, mate, you you got to get him on something a bit faster than that. Yep. Like, yep. You're not going to even give him a chance. Yep. So next thing you know, I'm on, I've got an RM65. Yeah, okay. So then I've learnt to ride with the clutch. So yep. what what I was delivered it to me house, but he gave me a bit of a lap around the paddock, showing me how power band works, and yep. I was like, holy shit, yeah, like, this thing goes. different animal yeah. compared to a TDR. Oh, money. mate, it was <laughs> just chalk and cheese, you know, yeah. and, and it – it wasn't for a little while longer. I had to, you know, adapt and learn to race start and mm. learn all these things. And, and in this same time, we've, we've met a person by the names of Graham Smith. Yep. So, um, Smithy's is a very credible dirt track rider, ran for many, many years. Yeah. And he started helping us out and, yep. you know, give me a little bit of technique and, oh, you know, try this and try that and, and sort of coming out on a weekend and we'll set up witches hats and I'd have to go around oh, my yeah. feet up and just learn all these little skills mm. and stop and start and learn to come in and back the bike in and, you know, all these little things. And anyway, in this same year, Kazos made his return. Ah, uh, yes. Eight years out. So yeah. we, he hasn't rode for a long time and, and he's put on a coaching clinic at Curry with Tony Vickers. Right. So dad's put us in that and the next thing you know, I've, I've started learning off Kazo, and then mm-hmm. he was doing a clinic once a month type thing. And not a bad bloke to learn off, yeah, mind you. Mate, I was there. Yeah, you know, 100%, 100%. I, I was there with every every clinic, and I end up, buddy. It's like I end up coming one of his other sons. You yeah, know, he yeah, had okay. Geordie Brody, and I yep. was always there. And I was someone who didn't like school, and yep. and Kazo was someone who didn't like work. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> perfect. We were, yeah, we were always perfect. we were always with each other. Yeah, and I'll stuff. ring him most mornings, Kazo. Like, can we go, Bert? Let's go, go do something. Can we go ride yeah. today? And, you know, I was 10, 11 years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, righto. And, you know, next thing you know, Kazo's having to ring up my principal and say, mm. listen, what Josh is learning, you'll be able to teach me in the classroom. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm a coach, I'm this, I'm mm-hmm. that. And and somehow we end up getting away with it. Right, but okay. I would race on a Sunday. <laughs> I love it. Monday itis would always be a problem. I'll, yep. I'll be too knackered to go to school Monday. And then I'll get to about lunchtime and be like, right, I'm ready to go again yeah, now. So. Okay. I'd hit up Kazo and then we'll go again. But, um, yeah, so that's how it sort of started there. And then 
jumped on the 85 and mm-hmm. just continued racing dirt track. Yeah, okay. Um, started to get a bit more serious with it. At the same time, I was playing cricket and soccer. Yeah. I was doing it all and yeah. you know, it's always how I have been. Play golf through the week. You know, I've always lived across a golf course. So. You, was there anyone uh, racing today that you raced against back in the juniors? Yeah, we'll say Boyd Hollis, his older brother, Brock. Yep. Oh, okay, yep. That's who we... It was me, another rider, Joe Morris. Yep. Um, the, the, the boys that were racing in my age group... Yep. It wasn't until when I started going to Australian tiles, New South Wales tiles, things like that... Yep. I was coming up against the likes of Brady Kurtz. Oh, okay. Matt Davies. Yes. Yep. Um, who else we got made of? Oh, I can't think of the minute. It's a long time ago yeah, now. Yeah, it's a, yeah, but like BK, I've, I've raced him since I was eight years old. Yeah, right, um, okay. So he was on dirt bikes, and then Jack started doing a bit of dirt track as well, yep. I think, when we were about 12. Um, I remember one year I was, I was at Central Coast, and... I don't know how many meetings I went unbeaten in both the 65 and the 85 yep, class. I yep. won every single race for I don't know how long. And then it was a wet day, and wet track. And next thing you know, this guy was there that I've never raced before. Right. And he beat me on the line by this much. And <laughs> turns out it was Jack Holder. Yeah, I'm thinking, who, okay. who the fuck's this? Yeah, you know, he, right. He's come and done this. But it was the only one he beat me in all day. Yeah, but still, okay. it stopped me running. And mm. that, that was all these years ago. And then um, I've sort of, they've, they're doing their junior speedway. Yeah. Mum and Dad, we, um, at the time, you know, Dad's grown up bat and ball type yep. operator. Okay. Motorsports never ran in our family. Yeah, it was right. just me and Matt that started it. Yep. And then, um, yeah, like, they were just going off advice off other people and mm. this and that. And then I went and tried my hand in oil track and yep. I was pretty good at that. And, yeah, okay. And then people saying, oh, I need to get him on a road bike. Oh, you need to get him on a speedway bike. And then we're unbeknown what to do at the time and... Again, like I, I missed out in the junior. I didn't get on a one two five, but oh, okay. I was at the age where we we're going to look at getting on a three fifty. Yep. And then um, be able to bite the bullet with that board and engine. Be able yep. to build a bike up, and then next thing you know, bloody, I've getting a phone call off Watto, and he's oh, okay. like, "Mate, you need to get up here now. Um, there's like a, an opportunity arising, I think, and oh, yeah, right. you know, I just want to have a talk to you." And so I, we went there in the February, and then. Um, yeah, it was literally like, it was either the end of January or start of February. It was like very early. And uh, he goes, Look, there's a, a road racing opportunity. They've asked me who I can think of for, you know, it suits the age and, yeah, and the okay. rider and all the rest of it. And yeah, Watto's put my name forward. So um, next thing you know, I was sponsored by <laughs> Honda Australia. Yeah, and, well. Um, yeah, myself, me and dad. And, and we were racing overseas and doing the Asia Dream Cup. And wow. yeah, that's how I sort of fell into that. And yep. Following year, I was meant to be a two year deal minimum to start with. Yep. All expenses paid. All we had to do was rock up the airport yep. and that's how it rolled. Um, but then yeah, it got to a point where yeah, the funds ran out for Honda Australia. They they went to another av- avenue and then I um yeah, I ended up getting the getting the flick from that and then um I was at the age then where I could start working. So yeah, right. at this time I wasn't doing any dirt track. Yeah. Didn't have a bike. We had to give the bike back to Honda. Yeah. Didn't have anything else. Mm. And then I was like, right, I'm giving Speedway a crack. And, yeah, okay. And even, even when I was doing road racing, I was always watching YouTube Speedway. Right, like, okay. I just loved it. There's something yeah. about it, like mm. the dirt and sliding and things yeah. like that. It's, it was just, it's a different animal, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, was, just, it's it was just it was a bit of me. And it was always something I've watched. And even since getting off a road bike, like mm. I still watch the MotoGP now, but not religiously. Yeah. Okay. I don't go out of my way to watch it, you know, yeah. like where Speedway, I watched championship race and i watch yeah. sweden i watch denmark i watch poland i watch grand prix like yeah. i'll watch whatever's on the telly you're a legitimate fan of the yeah, sport yeah i am mate i yeah. love it yeah. like 100 i love speedway it's just it's as simple as that and um yeah so i've i've went back and I've, we're like right oh we're gonna start work and then next goal is gonna be speedway yeah. so around this same time adam shields has just retired yep he's moved back to aussie yeah he had a whole lot of equipment with him mm-hmm. um and then, yeah, next thing you know, we've been introduced to him. We got one bike off him. Me and Dad went halves in, and then I started my speedway there. And I think it was the end of two thousand fourteen. So, what age were you by that stage? Oh, 15. 18. No, oh, eighteen. Yeah. Wow, fucking very late starter. Hang on, how old was I? Seventeen, twenty-one. Yeah, yeah. I was. I'd, yeah, I just would have just turned eighteen. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, I was like, yeah, eighteen and say four months, I reckon. Yeah, when Jesus. I, yeah so 
I was yeah. I was late to speedway yeah, and right. I did pick it up quite quick yeah, and yeah, yeah. mate I was that focused on wanting to race overseas. That's yeah. all I had in my head was like right I'm I'm gonna get good at this. Mm. I'm gonna race overseas. This that whatever. Anyway, and I had the plans, mate. I had it all worked out, man. What was that? Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, I was ready. I was yeah, ready yeah. for it. And good I was shit. watching what BK and that were doing. And yep. like I said, they're of folks I've grown up with. It's not like they've beat me every time. Whatever we used to beat each other. Sure. Quite regular. So yeah. I just thought to myself, if they can do it, I can do it. Mm. And then. Um, Oh, Fricky as well. I yeah, see yeah, he, okay. he was on a junior bike, but I never raced him on dirt track. Right, so it okay. was it was that same age though. Yeah, yeah. And um, Jack Brady, Fricky, they yep. were the, they were the top three always. Yeah. Yep. Um, and you always knew that they would be doing what they're doing now, mm. in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, so uh, that all started, and I got on a speedway bike, and and yeah, started picking it up quite quick, and then all of a sudden I got dealt with this bloody. Shit virus I had in my body. Oh, true. Yeah, 2015, mate. I um, had these two viruses I've never heard of in my life. Yeah, okay. If you just get a virus, yep. meant to knock you around. If you get the virus in your blood, yep. it's worse. Yeah. Well, I've had both the viruses at the same time, and they were both in my blood, and they were fighting over each other. So right. one was called cytomegalovirus, and the yep. other one was called microplasma. Yeah. They sound that, fucked up. Yes, yeah, they were. So what I end up doing is is that I end up getting chronic fatigue from it. Yeah. Um, I had glandular fever. I was just a very sick boy, mate. Mm-hmm. And the doctor, when I I've had the same doctor, doctor he's made my whole life. And when I was there and they're doing all the tests and all the rest of it, and he's looking at me and how do you feel? I said, Oh, I feel pretty buggered, you know. Mm-hmm. And he's like, Yeah, well, Josh, like, you know, I was eighteen, I was at this time actually, and he's going, Mate, like, you shouldn't be feeling like this and and like even how you are right now, he goes. I don't. I don't even know how you're sitting here with me. Yeah, like, really. Yeah, like with wow. what's showing up on the levels. Yeah, of course. He goes, mate. You're you're all over the shot. Like mm. it's not good. And I went right. I will. What's happening there? Can mm. I go to work tomorrow or what? And yeah. he goes, mate. Work's not even a priority for you anymore. And then he signed me off work for six months. Oh, and I was Christ. like, yeah. And I was just like, what the fuck? And mm. at first they thought I had lymphoma. Yeah. Okay. Probably cancer. Yep, you know. Yep. And I, I didn't even know what that was. Yep. I get in the car, me and Brooke about to leave, and she starts crying. And I was yeah, like, okay. "She knew what lymphoma." Yeah, was. I was like, yeah, "What's wrong yeah. with you?" Yeah, and she's going, "Josh, do you know what lymphoma is?" I said, "No, nah, no idea." Mm. She goes, "That's what Grandy died with," and I was yeah. like, "Yeah, right." So then, just then, it started to think. Then, like, "Yeah, fuck me, dead." And right. and at the same time, my mum, she's um, yeah, she's she was dealing with cancer as well. So I didn't really know how to come back to the household and say something. So yep. I, I sort of kept it that to myself at the start there and it was just me and Brooke knew until yep. further tests were, were made and um, yeah it wasn't until three weeks after that then I found out exactly after I got sent for all these other tests that yep. what was going on and and he goes mate you, you can't have any like you can't do anything to raise your heart rate or any chance of raising your temperature and, and exactly what he said to me he goes look Josh if your body temperature gets to 38 degrees yeah it starts to shut down. He goes, "You need to be rushed straight to the uh, the wherever it was yeah. hotel, uh, a hospital down yeah. John Hunter, oh, okay. and hopefully something they can do something for you." Like that's right. that was the severity of it. So, mate, I I dealt with us so many, so much shit, mate. Yeah, that yeah. year, like mate, that head mentally, noise would have been fucking oh, unbelievable. Down with me mum, not yep. knowing what's going on there every mm. day. You know, touch and go. Yeah, and then myself. Not knowing what's wrong with me, mm. I couldn't work, I yeah. couldn't do anything. I had all these plans that I'm racing, yeah, of course. you know, money side of things, couldn't earn money because yeah. you know, and I can't live off mum and dad my whole life. And yeah. then, and you were 18, 19 year yeah, old, yeah, and I'm, like, I'm sitting here trying the to the whole life ahead of you, trying to make moves, you know. And then, um, so yeah, that sort of happened, and I was like, yeah, I was in stuck in a, between a rock and a hard place, and like I said, I, I couldn't race, I couldn't mm. do anything, mm. and and to be honest with you, mate, I, I did feel fucked for a very long time and and even now like i can be on the go for so many you know for so long and then as soon as i stop i just crash hard mate yeah, and it right. just it knocks me around now and yeah. I, st- I still some days i wake up i get out of bed and i just think fucking here we go right, like, yeah and i mightn't have even done anything the day yeah, before okay you know Jeez. so it, it can be hard work but yeah, mate, do and we we crack on with it. So what have, what have you learnt to do in those in those times where you wake up and you feel absolutely fucked? Have you sort of worked your body out and you know what oh, you can and can't do? Literally, just get up and have a shower mm. and just tell myself it's we're we'll right in a minute. Yeah, like, you know, right. just usually if I've I've always been an active person, I never like sitting inside, and mm. then 
I know how I am, and if it's it's a beautiful sunny day and I've spent the day laying in bed feeling like shit, mm. I then feel like I'm depressed, mate. Yeah, okay. You know, and then yeah, I, I feel enough. as if I've wasted Good way a day. To look at the day yeah. yeah, so however I'm feeling, I just get up, mm. get outside, get some fresh air, and mm. and then you know try and you know get get a bit of energy that way. But um, at the end of the day, your body knows best sometimes. Yeah, and yeah. If you need sleep, you need rest, you need it. So yeah. now it's. Um, Excuse me. Now, what I do is I just, I just go with how my body's feeling. As yep. I said the other day, I, I had nothing on. Yep. Nothing was happening. Felt like shit. Yeah. Went to sleep for four hours. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, how it is. Enough. Yeah. So, like, has there ever been like ever been a time where it's affected your racing career? I don't know. I think adrenaline takes over yeah, in okay. that moment. There's been days, mate, where I wake up the next day and you got to do a bike wash or you got to travel here, mm. you got to travel there, and you just think, like, fuck me, Dad. Like, oh, this imagine. is never ending. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, that's yeah. there is certain times of the year, and it's only a couple. It's not like it's regular. If it was mm. regular, you just wouldn't do it. Yeah. Wouldn't, oh, excuse me. Oh, wouldn't put yourself through it. Mm. I'm like, but. And I'm not the only rider that thinks these thoughts either yeah. because I know how much I love it. Yeah. Okay. And I'm thinking to myself, if I'm having these thoughts, imagine what these other riders that yeah. don't seem to love it as much as I do are yeah, thinking. Yeah, exactly. You know, so mm. that's another reason for me. I can quickly snap out of it. But yeah. there is times you get to the year and you just think, fuck, I know. Mm. Like, they just want, I just want to be back in Aussie. Just yeah, yeah. Doing Enjoying whatever. the sunshine, yeah. playing the golf, doing going all for a ride that. Going Harley, doing whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, going up the mountain, just doing doing whatever you, you mm. want type thing. So... Mm. Yeah, fortunately, nowadays, like, I've I've been all right since. I don't think I've ever been really sick since that point enough to knock me around the way it did. Yeah, um, okay. You've had the flus and man flu does, that it's exists. It's a thing, mate. mate Fuck, I'm, I will vouch for that. Man flu is a so, fucking thing. And my missus can vouch for it too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the, when the man flu is about, like, we all, we all get smashed. But yeah. um, other than that, I've been not too bad, man. Yeah. yeah. Now, James, I've got a question for you. When you're going on a very long trip somewhere to a bike meeting, you got all your bikes in the back, you got all your tools, you got all your shit. What is one thing that you need to make sure of when you're going on a long bike trip somewhere? Well, you need reliability in your car, don't you? One hundred percent. And speaking of reliability, your van, right? It needs to be in the best nick. It needs to be well looked after like a well-oiled machine sort of like you you're like a well-oiled machine i am you know like when you walk and when you run i can hear all the nuts and bolts <laughs> and the screws and everything it's just it's just one it all works together it, it does work together so I, I definitely think that yeah when you're setting out on these long trips you need to have peace of mind one less thing to worry about. One less thing to worry bike about. bike needs to make the meeting and the yes. van needs to make the trip exactly and you need to get home Yes. So, one thing that I know for sure is that UltraTune at Toronto have some of the best mechanics in the business to make sure our vans and our cars, whether you're driving a car or a van, they need to be reliable. Absolutely. That van can only, if only those walls oh. could talk. I'm going to burn it when I'm finished with it. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get the UV light in all those walls. I was tortured. Yeah, <laughs> tortured. <laughs> but in all seriousness, get down to Ultra Tune Toronto. Uh, talk to Adam there. Uh, get, your, get your cars, your vehicles, your vans. Get everything looked after because there's nothing worse than getting halfway to a track. and You've broken down. You just think, why didn't I go to Ultra Tune Toronto? Get your shit sorted. Make smart decisions. You want to make those smart choices. Don't be an idiot. No, don't be an idiot. Do things the right way with Altitude Toronto. Good stuff. And like you, you, you talk about how you've had a huge season. You, you sometimes you wake up and you're absolutely rooted, but yet you come home and you go straight into the posty GP. Yeah, and mate, you've just come away with another win. Yeah, like that must feel good. Yeah, it is. That's. Out of everything that is on my race calendar every year, it's like you see that one towards the end of the year and you know you're coming home and it's like, oh, yeah. Mm. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a different feeling and it is it is good fun. Like I get to race with one of my best mates. And yep. and, um, and that's Brody. Yep, Brody yep. Nowlin. So yep. we um, we grew up racing against each other on dirt track and um, arch rivals and we didn't really, not saying we didn't become mates, but mm. saying that we we didn't really become mates and, until we linked up on the posties together in yeah, cool. 2017, I think it was. Yeah. So um, since then we've become very good friends mm. and and um, yeah like 
I got to I got like last year, mate. We we should have been going for four in a row, and seven laps to go, the front brakes locked up on Brody and coming on the main straight. He was coming in a lap later to, to pit, and you know I was going to go out and finish it. And he's um yeah he's he's had a crash, and the bike but he all bent up and couldn't move it. Yeah, he, he could have right. got up. And we still would have won. Yeah, you know, well yeah. that far in front, but the bike couldn't even push off the track. You know, we just had to leave it up against the barrier until the race was over and had to drag it back to the pits. Yeah, spewing. And then um, this year we're like, right, we're we're gonna go again, and mm-hmm. we we sort of we talk about it and we don't, and we do, we don't, and then. We get to October and it's like, right, our entries are out. Fucking let's go. Yep. And then it yep. gets put in and then I'm like towards this end of the season. Obviously, I had a lot going on with Sheffield. Sure. Uh, we just bought a house over there this year. So oh, there were certain stuff. things we were doing around there and then we are trying to work out when we are coming home. And yep. there was just a whole lot happening in that sense. And, sure. and not only that, Brody's also, him and his partner, Sarah, yep. they're uh, having a baby now. Yeah, nice. So... Um, yeah, like it just he had a lot going on as well, yeah. and then we're like talking like, oh, this is, is this going to be the last one? Like, mm. if we're going to go out, I want to go out with a win. Yeah. So you know, what, what's the plan? And we just we got there, and and Brody's just as competitive as I am. Yep. My old man obviously loves seeing me win. He's dad Brian. We we get on great. Yeah. He's, cool. um, yeah. So we're all there, own little team, and. We all want to win as much as each other, you know. And hundred um, percent, yeah, yeah we, absolutely. We put ourselves in a good position yep. yesterday and, and and made it happen. So I would have liked to do five in a row. That I don't think that would ever be beaten. But I suppose still three in a row and four and five years, it's yeah. still going to be a tough one to beat. Oh, mate, something to be proud of. And you know, it's just it's such a like it's such an awesome spectacle. Now I will admit. Now don't bite my head off for this. I've never been. And watched a post yeah. GP never, and I've lived around here yeah. my whole life. No, nah, so. look, mate, it's some certain things people will probably never experience, mm. and they'll just go along because they're in Cessnock, or yeah, yeah. they might be blocked in from the you know because yeah, it's yeah. literally through the on streets the side of the track. Yeah, you've got no choice sometimes. So yeah. on this day from seven till five o'clock, mm. these poor bastards can't leave their house. Yeah, so yeah. they're they're stuck there to watch it, mm. you know. But um, every year it seems that each house even gets into more of the spirit. Yeah. Um, They've all got bloody bars set up and it's all a big piss up for all them, you know. You, yeah, yeah. you look at each house, they've got, you know, 20 to 30 people out there and yeah. they, they have a great day. It's like the V8s are on their door, Yeah, you know, exactly right. There's yeah, a lot 100%. more thrills and spills. and I love it. Especially the weather we, we encountered yesterday, it was absolutely pissing down. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah that, that on them type of bikes as well as the, the roads of Cessnock being mm. a bit uneven and a bit oily and things like yeah. that, and as well as going through like the gutters that are this deep full of water. Yeah, yeah. Mate, she was, um, yeah, I felt like I was, oh, she was, yeah, I was going through the ringer. Yeah, yeah exactly. And like you, you said, you touched on it before, you've done road racing, you've done flat track, you've done speedway, you've done the posty GP. What, uh, obviously you're going to say speedway is your favourite discipline, but yeah. apart from speedway, what could you have seen yourself go down? Like what route could you have gone down other, other than speedway? Um. Yeah, look, uh, I just looked at it how I can make a living out of racing. Yeah, yeah. Tony Pryor, he'll vouch for me here. So uh, he's one of Dad's mates, old workmates, and he was the one who built me first race bike to to win an Australian title on. So um, he – I always just said, Tony, I don't care what I race. Mm. I just do not want to work. I want to ride a – uh, sorry, I want to race a motorbike for my job. Yep. That's all I had in my head. <clears throat> And then when we went down the the route of um, road racing in 2012, I thought, right, oh, well, I'll give this a crack and mm-hmm. try and be the next Casey Stoner. That's yep, that's yep. how I had it in my head. And then when that all sort of turned pear shape, I thought, right, well, I can go back to dirt track. But then you see them guys in America, they're not really like it wasn't until just now type thing that you got your Max Whale and your Billy Van Erd and things yep, like that. Yep. But I'm not saying I don't know their financials exactly, but. I know they couldn't retire on the sure. money they earn. Yeah, of course. And I thought to myself, well, it costs a lot of money to get where they're doing as well. Yeah. you got to, no different to Speedway, but you got to sh- move over there and they only ride once a month or once every two weeks. And Is that right? Yeah. yeah and then okay. it's only the, the real top boys that, yeah. you know, have things cover them. And then you've also got to win to be able to get good prize sure. money. So I then looked at another way of thinking, right, oh, Speedway, like if all these other boys are making a living out of it currently. Yeah no reason why I can't. Yep. So then I was like, right, hell for leather. Um, yep. uh, and, and I did enjoy watching it. So, I, yeah, I just went 
fucking all in, all in on Speedway, and yeah. and then fortunately enough to make it where we are now. And mm. I don't feel as if I've made it, but I do feel like I am making it. Sure, um, it is becoming more normal for me every time, and yep. I've still without you know the, my sponsors, or sorry, my sponsors that and you know the people that support me back home. If I didn't have them doing their part, like my life wouldn't be as easy over there either. So yeah, um, but to answer your question, bro, I don't, I don't really know. I just. If someone said, look, I'll pay you a million dollars a year to come and race this, I'll go and do that. Yeah, fuck. Like, I don't care. Like, I don't blame you, bro. Yeah, I do not wanna, blame you. I just want to ride motorbikes. Yeah. Just, I just, I love motorbikes. It don't matter what it is. Like, before yeah. I was, I come over here, I was cleaning the shit out of my cousin, and I've actually still got my my first 65. Oh, so, really? Still got it? Yeah, the one that Watto delivered me in 2004. That's was, an RM, RM65. Yep. Yeah. Don't get rid of that bad boy. Nah, mate. She's, uh, me and Matt, I think two years ago, stripped it down completely. Yeah. Restored the whole thing, powder coated it, new plastics, mate. The thing looks mint. So yeah, awesome. Clean that out and go there. Had the XR seventy five. I was going up and down the street on that. And, <laughs> I love it. And then, um, it. yeah. So, mate, I just, I just love racing motorbikes. I don't, I don't care what I'm on. Did you ever dabble in any motocross or anything like that back in the day? I done nah. I done a couple of ride days at Maitland. Yeah. Okay. Um, mate, it's a whole another ball game. That mm. like you got to learn to jump and learn technique and yeah. you know. Like, I've, yeah, I, I've rode at Maitland a few times. I've been to Singleton. Yeah. I think I went to Raymond Terrace once. Yeah. MX Central. Yeah. Oh. MX Central a fair few years ago. Um, Done that. But, no, I didn't do a whole great deal of motocross. I've never really done enduro. I've yeah, done a bit of bush okay. riding, but yeah. nothing crazy. Yeah. Um, Dad wouldn't actually let me ride in the bush when I was younger. Oh, He's true. He's like, nah, we've, we've, got the, we've got the property here. And I was about to say, we've got the best bush at you know, terrain in the world to, yeah. to fucking to ride in the bush here. It was just more that dad was worried that, you know, when I'm in the backyard, there's no one coming the other way. Yeah, so of course. it was more for my own protection. It wasn't mm. so much of him being a dick. It was just, yeah, <laughs> he wanted to look after me, mate. Yeah, and, yeah, and not yeah. only what's that, what's best for you. Not only that, mum and dad, they weren't, you know, the Bank of Australia either. Sure. So they've, they've put it, they didn't put a, I can't say this the wrong way, but financially my bikes weren't, you know, up here compared yeah. to everyone, right. it was just the best that they could give me. Sure. So if they could have given me more, they would have. Yeah. So what I did have, it was this, it was a bloody multi-million dollar bike because yeah. it, it literally took every bit of their cent to, to give me what I had. Yeah. So dad didn't want to see me out in the bush flogging it and wrecking it either. Yeah, you know, so there was certain things, something had to give. And, um, yeah, that was another thing when people were like, oh, you're growing up here, you can ride every day. I'm like, yeah, but I wasn't allowed to. Yeah, so, of course. You were you know, heavily restricted. And I was then. sitting there chomping at the bit every yeah, week. Of couldn't wait for Sundays to just go racing again. It's yeah. like that is, and then as we sort of touched on before, I've I've never had a sip of alcohol in my life. I don't do drugs, nothing like that. And yeah. and racing is my drug. That is my yeah. adrenaline and that's when I feel at my best. And yeah. you know, when you are sort of in a bit of a slump, you don't if you don't ride, you don't miss it sure. in a way. Yeah, okay. But then if you give yourself just a little bit of a hit, yep. you know, you go and like I went and done this posty thing yesterday, that mm -hmm. adrenaline, that the winning feeling. Yeah. It's like right over well, the next meeting's the sixteenth of December for their um celebrating the centenary yep. here. Yep. At I'll, Curry. Yeah. Curry Curry, yeah, yep. that's right. So I can't wait for that. Yeah. So good stuff. um yeah, I'm ready for that one too. Good stuff. And <laughs> like you said, you know, you, you don't drink. You, you're looking in phenomenal shape, mate. You've obviously got a hectic uh, routine. I see when you're back in Oz, you do hit up a uh, Fit Stop Maitland a fair bit. Yeah, you're doing some workout with there. Not an ad, by the way, but you know, it looks like you're in, enjoying your enjoying your fitness. Yeah, like I've never been a fan of gyms and things yeah, like that. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't like the idea of just going to a gym, yeah. lifting weights, looking in the mirror, whatever. Like, yeah, 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 of course. I think certain things for speed weight, like. Especially, I don't feel like you need to go to a gym for. Yeah. Um, it was more as if that, like, you can do your whole lot of own body weights in the shed. Mm. You can do certain dumbbell exercises, things like that. Yeah. Go run up the fucking bush. Yep. Get on a pushy. Yep. You know, you can do all this stuff behind closed doors. Get on the Harley. Yes. <laughs> go go that's, between that's the, the pumps. That's the D-tune, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's, that's it. That's the D-tune. <laughs> that's, that's my rest day. I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. go up the mountain of the morning, then I'll, I'll come home for a nice day. Me and Brooke get on the Harley. We'll yeah, nice. Went to Hinton Pub and have a chicken snitty. And, oh, love you know, it, mate. That's magic. That's, my, that's, that's living. My Harley's actually in the shop at the moment. Yeah. I um I took it into Gosford the other day. I'm getting some burly bars and some fork covers and stuff. Yeah. And I'm just, I just, I'm itching to get it back. Yeah. Which when you do, we'll go for a ride. Mate, I can't wait. I cannot wait. I, I remember when you were yeah, in the off-season last year, I saw you tearing around in your home thinking, 
I need to do that. Yeah. I want to be a part of that. Yeah. So well, I sold my house a couple of months ago and I thought, yeah, fuck it. There's no time like the present. No. So I bought I'm my first Harley. You. Absolutely. Well, I don't even have Harley. So oh, you don't? No, nah, of the sponsored. So oh, true. I've got, I got my cousin. i got on ease. got my uncles. got yeah. my brother-in-law. Oh, pff, got you, my other not, brother-in-law. You're not short of choice. No, nah, I've got about five Harleys on my doorsteps that I can just jump on. So that there's no reason to me jumping 30 grand onto one and yeah, doing yeah. the same. So, I understand. Um, yeah, I've just... Yeah, I'll just jump on everyone else's. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but, um, I, I, I see uh, in a, you know, fit stop Maitland and I just think, fuck, I I love the gym and yeah. I love working out, but, mate, I, can't, that, do, sorry, I, I, can't, that. I can't do that sort of stuff. Eh? I, I I am not built for cardio. Yeah. <laughs> not one bit. Well, yeah, it's just up here, like. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I know. Um, <laughs> nah, so I, I, I got a message off Gemma and Ricky and, yep. and um, I didn't open it for three weeks oh, because – it was sitting in me requests, and yeah. I thought, oh. then they they said, "Look, we're in, we're a new gym. We're coming to Maitland. Um, we're trying to help out local athletes in the yep. area. If it's something you'd like to do, mm-hmm. you know, would love to have you here. You yeah, can come awesome. and train in our gym. Yeah, and, you know, get you. And I, th- like I said, I didn't open it for three weeks, yep. and then I'm sort of glad it turned out the way it did because when I did open it and I did meet them, I didn't miss anything of their opening day sure. because when I end up did going in there and I was training every morning for the last. Oh, I was I was in there every morning. I think at six or seven o'clock class, and I would train. Uh, yeah, Monday to Saturday for the last month or three weeks, or I think it was I think it was a month that I was home. Yeah, and then I'd also do me stuff of an afternoon, either go yeah. for a swim or awesome. go up the mountain or on the pushy, and you know whatever I was doing. But I was making sure I was in a routine of going to the gym. Yeah, and mate, I loved every second of it. Yeah, awesome. like it was. Something I've never experienced, something I've never done, yeah. that it, it sort of ticked every box for me. And sure. I haven't been in since I've been home because I've sort of just, every day I've had something on mm. and it's no excuse. I've still been training, I've still been going up the mountain, yeah. but I just haven't wanted to do that type of training yet. Yeah, of course. Um, but to be honest, I'll probably, I may even go this week. Yeah. I might start up again now that things are calming down. And yeah. um, if not, it'll be sort of next week. It'll just be then from Monday to Friday. I'll go every morning, mm. 45 minutes, mate. Nothing, you know, I've still yeah. got the whole day ahead of me, and there's certain muscles I can use that I I don't use every I mean, every day and day in day life. So, and it's, it's different training techniques that mm. I haven't been experienced yet. Yep. So, um, yeah, I'm in there, and I'm obvi- and it's how I like it as well. Is this the reason why I don't like gyms? Is because this is actually cardio based exercises. Sure. So yep. it's circuits. You do yep. ten of this, go to the next one, ten mm. of that, ten of this. You know and and I like that. Yeah. That that suits me how I am and my personality. Yeah. So keeping busy and mm. you know, and then then you're racing against yourself type thing. And yeah, it's something I enjoy doing. And yeah, I'm, I'm keen to go back in there and get stuck in again. And you know, what? I, I really should hit up uh, Ricky because mate, I'm I'm trying to get I'm trying to slim down for this wedding in April. I'll tell you what, you uh, can come with me. Fuck, I'm I'm gonna have to because yeah. I need to do something. Like I I am losing weight just bit by bit. Yeah, but I will admit. Due to the podcast and especially going on um, on YouTube and that, it, it takes it's a lot of work. Yeah. Um. So my my gym time was always like before work. So yep. between like four and seven a.m. That's when I'd go to any time. Yeah. But now that's my podcast time. Right. To do editing and all that sort of stuff. But I will. I especially come closer to the wedding. I'm going to be like, fuck. I really need to get my ass. Thing show. is though, bro. It's like. It is what goes in your mouth. Mm. You can't out train a bad mm. diet. That's, that's exactly, exactly right. how it is. You know? And I've tried. So, yeah. I've tried. I've tried. <laughs> Mate, that. many have. <laughs> but um, even me, like right now in this current moment, I had pizza for dinner. Like, what did I have? I had KFC for dinner last yeah, night right. after Posey. What's, had, what's your KFC go to? Zinger, bacon and cheese combo. I love that. Zinger, bacon and cheese combo. Love that. With 10 nuggets. So I can polish oh, a whole lot. Shit. Mate, yeah. Yeah, I only go out. regular though, yeah, so yeah, right. small yeah. chips. Small chips and a bottle yeah. of water, well, obviously. Nah, Pepsi. Oh, nah, true. Pepsi. Pepsi Max, Mate, no they sugar. Do cool, nah, full, <laughs> full, full sugar. Fat, yeah. <laughs> I love it. They do the cool ridge water at, at KFC. It don't sit well with me, mate. Oh, true. I'm a bit of a water snob. You oh, know, like right. Mount Franklin pump. Yeah. It's the only water I like. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So. Understandable. Well, you yeah, won't like this, whatever the fuck this is. <laughs> Pure spring water, mate. Yeah. It's probably for out Or in Scotland, actually. There's a water called, it's in a purple bottle, it's called Highland Spring. Oh, okay. Mate, off it said. Mother's milk. Yep. Yeah, it is. true. It is. Yeah. Hey, we all, we all got to have a cheat meal every now and then. Yeah. KFC is my go-to. Oh, bro. KFC, mate. And is the KFC, like, is, Shit. It, is it all the same nah. over there? It's nah. different. On a, mate, 
Australian fast food is the best fast food in the world. Yeah, true. No wonder I look yeah. the way I do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Picture of health. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, it's just beautiful, man. Like, it's just... Yeah, true. Oh, I love Aussie fast food and yeah. I, I, Chinese as well. Yeah, okay. Western Chinese. Best Chinese in the world. I've yeah. been to China, mate. They don't do the food like they do here. Is that right? Oh. Wow. Mate. I would have thought... you got to give that a run. I would have thought Chinese food in China would be nah, the go-to. It's just what you're used to, I suppose. Mm, yeah, they okay. might think it's great. They might think what I eat down the road is terrible. Yeah, but right. Tell me right now, if you haven't, give Western Chinese a run. Mm. Mate, mm. it is the best by far. What's so. um? What's the one down the road? Is it not Nonya's? What's the one just across the road from the HG? Oh, no, that's Main, main Sing. Yeah, Main Sing, yeah. yeah. What, what's that like? I don't mind it. It's just not how I like my honey chicken and oh, my spring rolls. Right. Hey, they are know? some... As some go tos, yeah, well. you so can't stuff them up. Nah, so it's just it's what you like, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah true. Western Chinese, the way they do their spring rolls, Mongolian lamb and yeah. honey chicken, yeah, mate, can't be matched. Mate, I'm salivating right now, and I've had dinner. Yeah, I could go seconds. Oh, <laughs> can't match it, bro. I'm telling you. And um, when we were when we were living across the road at um Head and Greeter only a couple of weeks ago, Did Burger Chef a run to you. Hey, I swear I kept Burger Chef open. Hey, <laughs> uh, it was terrible. And this is how bad I was, right? Now I would always use night shift as an excuse. Yeah. But if I've just come off night shift, I'm really tired and I can't be bothered cooking. I would get Burger Chef, and I was that fat fuck that got delivery. Oh, I paid across the road. six bucks for delivery. You didn't. I did. Numerous oh times. Oh, my God. Numerous times. I'm going to say half a dozen times. Just so you know, if you don't know, it's about <laughs> 40 metres from his door. Like, I'm, I walk out my front door and it's not even, like, it's... it's it would have to be 40 metres. Oh, if that. If that. And you know what? Because they, I've worked out that every time they delivered, they never walked it. No. They always drove. Yeah, because so, they think they're having to go somewhere. Yeah, exactly right. Then they see the address and it's like, <laughs> this motherfucker's only two doors up from me. Oh, oh my I God. Know. I'm not proud of it, but... Oh. Is what it is. Six bucks was six bucks. I suppose it says you're getting out your jammies, doesn't well, it? Well, I was probably nude. Yeah, I put clothes on yeah. most of the time. Yeah, except when I had to answer the door. Yeah, put, put my Mrs. Robe on. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Look good in that too. I bet. Oh, mate, I did. And <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty lucky because my Mrs. is a stick, right? Yep. And I don't know. She eats the same food as I do. Yeah. So I'm like, where the fuck does it go? She'll get a large Big Mac meal, and I'll get a regular quarter pounder meal. Yeah. It's like. I just don't understand how I'm like that. You, you, you and run she's, a few beers and she's down like too, that. Yeah? Oh, not honestly. I don't. No. Nah? Because I've right. got a weak stomach when it comes to alcohol. Right. Like I just, I just, I'm a bad vomiter. Yeah. So if I have a big night, it's like I would have half as many beers as someone else. Yeah. Right. And that's big for me. Yeah. Okay. So, which is a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. I'm Maybe not you just come up the mountain with me, come to fit stop. Yes, get you in a bit start of sweating a bit. Yeah, get, get a bit of. Well, now I know you're home every afternoon. Yeah. There's no excuse. Yeah, exactly right. Mate, get on the bushy, do whatever. Yeah, you've actually got a makeshift gym across the road here. I do too. So, yeah. mate, you're laughing. Mate, it is pretty good, and you know we, we like this spot because there's paths all the way around. There's that makeshift gym down there. Um, you know, I don't have a pushy, but yeah. if I was to get a pushy, mate, it, it'd be so easy just to go for a, go for a spin. Yeah. But mate, wife, wife and kids, mate, it's it's busy, yeah. busy life. See, yeah, wife for me, obviously, mm. but no kids on the agenda. Not yet, nah, not yet. No, not interest for both parties as oh, well. Okay, we just we're happy doing our life, what we're doing. Yeah, good um, stuff. Me and Brooke are in each other's pocket for seven and a half, eight months of the year, and yeah. when we get home, it's like I kiss her in the morning, and yeah. I, I see her about eight o'clock when I'm done doing all my fun stuff. Yeah, you know. Fair like, there's certain days that we still include each other mm. and do our thing, but Brooke's more than happy to have me do what I want to do when I'm home. Yeah. Obviously, right. certain parts of what I want to do is spend time with her, but yeah, sure. if I'm wanting to catch up with mates or if someone ever wants to ring me and do something, like I'm going fishing at six in the morning with yeah, one of my right. good mates, Marco. So, yeah. Um, yeah, getting out and about and... Mm. Brooke's never going to stop me doing what I want to do. Oh, and, good stuff, mate. And then if, if we were to chuck a, a little kitty in there, it's just, you'd have that guilt. Oh, yeah, You know, course. and, and I'll, I'm a very, like, guilt can be passed onto me that sure. quickly. Yeah, and, right. Okay. Then to sit there and then think that Brooke's at home looking after our baby and I'm yeah. out doing something that I want to do when she yeah. can't do what she wants to do. Yeah. It just eat me up. Yeah, so I understand. Then I would miss out then. Yeah. And then that's how I feel that certain relationships, you know, yeah. send up crumbling. Yeah. When, if they have both got to give their life up to, to raise something else, yeah, and um, right now with with how our lives are, it's mm. just not something we're committed to. Yeah, I understand that. 
hundred percent. And like I had um I had Cluffy message me today asking me to come down to Undira and just get on the tools for him for a day. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, if I was a single man with no responsibilities, yeah, you'd be there. I'd I'd follow him around Australia. I'd do the yeah. Aussie titles. I would yeah. not care. Yeah. But it's just I cannot just dump everything just for the day. Nah. Head down to Undira. It's just yeah. As much as I'd love to, but in saying that, I wouldn't change it for the world. No, of course, I've man. Got, just I've got the best misses and the two. I've got the best kids, and yeah. I, I, I'm probably a bit biased. Yeah, fuck, I love my little baby. Yeah, it's so good, man. No, it's mint, mate. Like so good. Like I said, I'm we're just as happy doing what we're doing right yeah. now. You mm. know, like waking up every day. What are you doing? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Or, but I'll do something. Sure. Or it might be oh, I'm doing this, 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 this. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And. Like, I'll wake up tomorrow. Brooks just asked me before I come here. She's like, oh, what are you doing tomorrow? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I think I've got something on. Mm. And I'm like, what are something you doing? Something fun, obviously. Yeah, 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 I'm like, what are you doing? She goes, oh, well, I'm going to go, you know, meet up with Shaq. We've, we're having uh, breakfast at 11 o'clock or lunch or whatever it was. And yeah. uh, they've got to discuss their the wedding plans for one of our good friends, Danielle. Yeah, cool. Um, so both Shakira and Brooke are, are doing a speech on Saturday. And, oh, good stuff. Um, yeah, so they're going to go nut that out. And then I've then realised that I'm... I'm going fishing, yeah, so yeah, I, right. I forgot about that. So. Oh, what a shame. Yeah, I'm going go fishing. Going fishing in the morning and yeah, then right. uh, come back, probably get a snitty for lunch mm, and then mm. watch the Melbourne Cup. Yeah, oh, no, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, that snuck up on me a bit. Always does. Yeah, I, I'm, I've am i never been one for the races, hey. Man, it's, I, mate, it's the only race I watch every yeah, year. Yeah, exactly. I'm pretty much I've never backed a winner. Yeah, yeah, Every one I. that I back is three legs or a donkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely shocking, mate. In saying that, I went to, this is a long time ago now, I think I was actually, I think I was there with... Sam and Bevo and oh, it was a Boxing Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah that I was, was there. That, well, that was my first ever races, uh, races experience. Twenty sixteen Boxing Day it was. Is that right? Yep. Holy shit! I, remember, I was there, mate. I remember yeah, it. We're all young pups back yeah. then. Yeah. So it was a year before I went overseas. So I remember it clear as day because yeah, I was meant okay. to be racing at Curry and I didn't get put in the official lineup. Yeah, right. And then, um, then all of a sudden I got called up two days before. Yeah, yeah. And then I got called up on. Boxing day on the day, saying right. race tonight. Yeah, I was like, nah, mate, I'm buddy, I'm I'm going out for the day. I've yeah, got, my bikes aren't ready. And, yeah, fair enough. You know, and that was it. Yeah. So, and uh, you know how I said before about how I've got like a real weak stomach when it comes to piss. That day you were mate, a bit crook. I, I got I got a lift home from I don't I can't remember who picked me up, but like halfway home I was like out the door. Yeah, throwing up. It's like, it was car. like four in the arvo. I'm yeah. like, oh, I am such a weak. Tell you what, that was a big day, but like it I don't was. I don't even drink, mate. And I was bloody knackered by the end of that. <laughs> yeah, hundred so. percent. Yeah, mate. I've always wanted to ask you too. Where did what? Why number one hundred and three? Right, so we're gonna go. How do we do this? I was gonna go thirty oh, for, yeah. for my birthday. Yep. I never had a favorite number. Like, yeah. I've never, right. Never interest me or whatever. Yeah. So I was gonna go thirty, and then I couldn't do that because of Chris Watson. Oh, okay. I was registered. Yes. Yep. And we're like, right? Do we just go number three? Yep. Couldn't do that, Kazo. Right. And I was like, right. And then I'm like, what else can we do? And then my dad's birthday's like the third. Okay. And then. That's the sorry. That's when we went to go three. Yep. And then I I don't know how we end up. We'll go like, well, why don't we go ten? Mm-hmm. No, they can't have ten either. That's Brady Kurtz. Right. And I was like, fucking hell. Well, what about one oh one oh three? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, you can have that. Oh, like, sweet. Done. Yeah. So one oh three, and that's it. Just like, like that. Yeah, so simple. Literally, mate. There's nothing else to it. It was yeah, just right. Yeah, nothing. Nothing meaningful about it. it was just I couldn't have every. Other. Oh no, one number seven as well. Okay. That was my mum's favorite number, and that was um. That was Mitchell Dunlop's race number. Yeah, okay. And then at this time, it, like you could have seven, then you could have 07. Oh, right. And it didn't okay. matter. So, yeah, yeah, true. So then we went to go 07, but then that was Josh Bunt. Right. So then I couldn't have them. I was like, yeah, okay. what number can I have? So you've got, you've literally, you've wound up with like the seventh pick or something. Literally. <laughs> and then it's me. I wouldn't change anything else on my bike. It just looks funny. Yeah, yeah. Like 103 enough. is just who I am. And, and, and now you've raced overseas for a number of years. Have you ever come across a European bloke with that number? No. So you are literally the only one in I Speedway one. running that 103. Yep. Love it. I am. And, and that's where it will stay. And why pink? Where did pink come from? Mum, breast cancer. Yeah, okay. So that's a um, nice it was touch. Just, that's yeah, a nice just touch. something that's meaningful to me. Um, yeah. So it was just, you got to have a few colours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My cousin's ringing me. Can't answer this right now, oh, man. Sorry. All good, mate. All good. Um, yeah, so... Breast cancer, it's yeah, it's something that's a bit meaningful to me. Yeah. Cancer in general, but breast cancer yeah. especially. Um, pink, it's bright. Yep. 
Loud. Easy, easy to spot on the track. It's loud and it's suits, proud. Yeah, it suits me. Suits your flamboyant riding style, yeah. that's for sure. Pink makes the girls wink. Ah, I got lo- love that. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> no, nah, but um, yeah, so I, yeah, black, pink and white. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the, the pink was, yeah, for a little touch from your mum, yeah. Yeah, lovely. So, and you touched then about how long you've been with Brooke. Are you guys high school sweethearts or? No, nah, but Brooke's actually, come about? Brooke's been a part of my family since I was like near two year old, mate. Oh, right. Okay. Um, but as in saying that, sorry, that's that's a lie. So mum, mum and dad moved to Curry 30 odd years ago now. Yeah. Yep. And dad's grown up in Curry his whole life, but my mum moved to the town and then uh, Brooke's mum worked at the local pub. And ah, then of course right. my mum was a florist and then yep. the pub... We're getting, you know, flower arrangements done, functions, this and that. Yep, well, yep. well, Brooke's mum ended up saying to my mum, oh, I'd like to have a go at this, yeah, you know, right. and they end up becoming friends. And and then they're like, well, next thing you know, Brooke's mum was actually working for my mum. So right. yep. I've got th- four older sisters. So I'm one of five yep. and I'm the only boy. And uh, one of my older sisters is named Brooke. And okay. my wife's mum fell in love with my, my sister. Right. It was just, even though, like, there was obviously the other two and she loved them all. Yeah. Brooke in particular yeah. loved her. Yeah. And when she found out she was pregnant, she actually asked me, Mum, she said, look, if I have a baby girl, would you mind if I call her Brooke? Yeah, okay. And she's like, no, not at all. So Brooke's actually been a part of my family wow. for a very long She's named after my sister. Yeah, So, okay. um, yeah, I've, I've we've known each other. I I can't remember her as a kid. Right. I, I don't remember too much of my childhood, to yep, be honest. Yep. I was always busy thinking about something else. Yep. Um, but then I can sort of remember when I was about eight, eight, ten year old, certain things. And then when I started going to high school and when I went to Curry High, she was in year 11, I was in year eight. And then I was like, Sort of looking at him, thinking to myself, "All right, oh, now <laughs> not a bad start, sort if I don't mind think, myself." Yeah. Starting to think different now, <laughs> and then it was sort of like, "Yeah, I was only 15. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, it didn't didn't really like well, thir- fourteen. I was type yeah. thing, and she was you know coming on sixteen. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. wasn't interested in me, but I was interested in yeah, her. Yeah, of course, that would always then, start, isn't it? Yeah, and then <laughs> it sort of chased her a little bit after that, but nothing really happened. And yeah, it wasn't until I was yeah eighteen, and you know. That's how it sort of worked out. So yeah, right. Yeah, we've been together since 2015. Yeah, good and, stuff. And um, yeah, same year I started Speedway. Right. Okay. Same year I got crook. Yeah. Everything okay. was just what a year that. Yeah, was everything happened in 2015. Christ. You know. Yeah. Wow. And um, yeah, stuck with me since. So your sister's name's Brooke. Yep. So they're both Brooke Pickering. No. So oh, your sister was previous married. marriage to yeah. So oh, Brooke okay. Kiss is yeah, her name. Yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah. I was going to say Because you've both got Logan Walsh here Yeah right? well we'll be Come yeah. April we will be In yeah. April it's going to be um, It's going to be fucking confusing Yeah you know It's so It's so funny yeah. <laughs> We still Is it both it. L-O-G-A-N Exactly the same Yeah spell. right <laughs> Heck <to say. laughs> That's gold And like there's not There's hardly any female Logans around No So what was the chances of Yeah of I actually only know one Yeah Yeah okay Yeah And like she's a Central Coast girl Yeah I'm a Newey boy yep. I'm so glad I found someone not in Newcastle. Yeah. Like just away in the Central Coast. It's no mutual friends, yep. no ties or anything like that. But um, yeah, it still spins. And it spins everyone out who doesn't know. Yeah. Like if we go to a, like we went to Curry. Logan, you both look. Oh, literally <laughs> every time. Um, Like we went to Curry Bowling Club uh, a couple, oh, couple, about two years ago now for dinner. But because we lived really close, we had to sign up. Yeah. So then I'm doing the paperwork. Oh, yeah. I'm, and, like, she just took the kids over and sat in the thing, and I did all the paperwork, and I, I put the two bits of paper in. And the lady's like, oh, no, no, you need to do one for her as well. I said, that is for her. And could she, they just read the first name. Yeah. Like two know. Logans. Like, no, you didn't have to do two. I was like, no, I know that. Yeah. It's like, it, and everyone, they always say the same thing. It's like, oh, imagine when you get married, it's going to yeah, the same yeah. name. and. It's like, okay. Yeah, good one. Have your laugh, yeah. New joke, mate. Yeah, yeah exactly. Next one now. Get some new material. But everyone has their, everyone has their giggle. Yeah. You know, that's their first time. It's our hundredth time. Yep. So, well, it's Let all, them have their moment. Yeah, exactly. It's all good. But um, it definitely doesn't get old. Yep. And it, now I can't get her name tattooed on me because... It'd be a bit weird, It'd be that. weird having my own name tattooed yeah, on me. Yeah, I suppose. So... That's true. But I, You'll get her ni- initials currently, like L, whatever you... Yeah, you well, know, that's true. Previous to marriage. That's true. But in saying that, her middle name is Louise with a Z. And she's like, she hates it. Because mm. she's forever having to... She's, if she tells her some, If she tells her name to someone, like say on the phone or whatever, she's got to spell it out for them. Mm. And then her surname is Carol. So 
see, there's been times she's told me where she will go to a hotel and it'd be under Carol. Yeah. So she go, oh yeah, room for Carol. And she goes, oh, Mrs. Logan. Ah. Thinking it's Carol. Carol Logan. And yeah. she's like, no, 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 it's Logan, it's Logan Carol. Carol. And they have the audacity to say, are you sure? Oh. It's like, no, I don't know my own name. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's just, yeah, mate. It's Red funny. Hot. It's funny. Red but yeah, we deal with it. Yeah. Well, we deal with it. We love it. It's it's all right. It's not bad. It is what it is. Speaking of um of, of tattoos, have you got any tattoos, Josh? I've only got one. Right. It's, um, oh, I'll pick that up. That's, yeah, just one pretty special to me. Yeah, One okay. of my mates passed away again, yep. 2015. It was... Um, Hectic year. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. So yeah, yeah. Myself and about 10 of my mates all got exactly the same tattoo. Yeah, good just stuff. Little touch and... Good um, stuff. Yeah, to be honest, mate, I'd... Off, it's on the inside of my arm. It's yeah, not very visible. Sure. Um, I forget I have it. Yeah. Until people oh. go, oh, you got a tattoo? I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, what else you got? I'm like, oh, that's it. That's <laughs> it, yeah. But, mate, I forget that's on my arm sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It, you just, it becomes a part of you. Yeah. And I don't see it. Yeah. You know, everyone, people notice, but I honestly, I don't notice. Yeah. And same as anything. Like, I I, I love them. Yeah. So expensive. Yeah, I'll, I'll be getting, I'll be getting more, to yeah, be honest. Yeah, okay. I'd like, yeah, but I do like them, but mm. at the same time, knowing what you want, sure, it is on you for life, so exactly. you've you got to make sure you're made up with it. Yeah, so, you've got to um, wear it loud and proud, because yeah. if you hate it, it fucking ruins confidence, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. So, well, mate, I've got a, a couple of questions, lighthearted questions, just to finish off. Yeah. Um, I ask every every guest this, yep. favourite band or artist? Probably Fleetwood Mac. Oh, Stevie Nicks. Yeah, yeah righto. It's Fleetwood Mac yeah. and also currently Luke Combs. Oh, mate. Yeah, so I took the missus to see Luke Combs. I went and watched him too the yeah, other week. Yeah, you saw him the yeah. other week too. I wanted to watch him for about four years, mate. Yeah, just, how good. Oh, I love him. He was yes. unbelievable. Yeah. He was, what was it, like a stadium sort of yeah, show? A stadium. Uh, yeah, stadium. Yeah, it was in, in a stadium, yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I don't know this. I don't know the names of the stadiums. Was it in there. Scotland or uh, Manchester? In Manchester, yeah, in England, cool. yep. So good stuff. Uh, we only seen that on the, I think four days before we flew home. Yeah, so, okay. Um, yeah, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, like, good stuff. Like I said, I've, I've wanted to see him for near four years yeah, now. Yeah. And what's your favorite song of his? <sighs> Mate, I, all of them. Literally, I, <laughs> I know <laughs> every word to every song. Yeah, I don't have a okay. favorite. Yeah, one sure. at the minute, probably "Wild Things Are." Yeah, that's, okay. that's one of my favorite ones. Yep, yep. Um, but I genuinely. I know every single song. Yeah, like, okay. I can't just sit there and just say, "Oh, that's me out and out favorite." Yeah, because, sure. Yeah, but yeah, wild things are at the minute. I, I keep finding myself listening to that yeah, one. Yeah, okay. Just, Good or another song called "Doing This." Yeah, it's, right. I sort of I can relate to it a little bit. Yeah. Um, the way he sings about it is that whether he's doing what he's currently doing, yeah, as in selling out bloody major stadiums, yeah, or if he didn't make it at all. And he was just playing at a pub in his in his hometown. Yeah, he would still be doing the same thing. Yeah, and I think course. to myself, well, if I wasn't overseas here racing a motorbike right now, mm. and I didn't get to do that, I'd still be at home racing sure. a motorbike somewhere. Yeah, so exactly. That's just my do little because you love it. Man. Yeah, that's just my little touch to it. Hundred percent. When we went and watched, we watched him and down in Sydney at um, Kudos Bank Arena, and it was the same night that the Matildas oh, yeah. were playing. Uh, their semi final against France or something, yeah, or England. And me and the missus were walking. We had to go past the f- soccer stadium, like literally, we were only fifty meters from the from the gates to the footy stadium. And like as we were walking past towards the Kudos Bank Arena, you could hear the crowd count down ten, nine, yeah. eight, right before kickoff. Right, mate, it nearly shook the yeah, shook nuts. the ground we were walking on. And during the concert, there was a whole crowd full of. Socceroos jerseys, like yeah, Matilda's right. jerseys. That's cool. And every time there was a goal scored, like mid song, Luke's singing, so this screaming. whole section would just like literally jump up. Oh, and that's down. awesome. Isn't it, it was hectic. It was a pretty, um, pretty cool night to go yeah, see. Yeah, that's unreal. But then it's like, why is this whole crowd jumping up and down during yep. this quiet song? Like you can imagine what Luke's probably thinking. Yeah. But obviously he would have known the Matildas were playing next door. But I do. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Mate. <laughs> it was unreal. Um, what have you got? And last one, mate. Favorite movie of all time? I'm into my old movies sometimes. Like me we, uh, too, me too. Right, so I don't froth old movies. I I do like sniper related movies. Oh, okay, I'm into that. Not so, so much war. Yeah, it's a good shooter, movie. That's yeah. one of my favorites. But there's two movies that come to mind for me. Uh, one's called The Man from Snow River. 
I know Jim Craig. Yes, I know, I know my it, mate. Boy. I know it, mate. I know. Bro, it. that is like one yeah. of my favourite. When, when he, when he, they're all watching, going yeah. like looking down that hill. He actually old... done that too. Yeah, wasn't I, it? I yeah, it wasn't that. a stunt double. Yeah, that was Jim Craig, Straight mate. He nailed there. it. So I love it, mate. That and another one called uh, a Knight's Tale with Heath Ledger. I reckon I've seen that at least a hundred times. Really? Like, mate, like you're the love. first person I've ever met in my life that's. No, exactly what I'm talking about. Right. I've seen them both. A Knight's Tale was like Heath Ledger prime, long blonde hair. Uh, um, right, so Fred Jacobson, you yeah, yeah. obviously Danish. Yep, yep. Fred's man him become very good mates. Yep. He's actually come back out in January. I think he'd want to come on here too. So yeah, awesome. Oh, might mate, come over fuck, and have, a bit of a chat. have him on. Yeah. Get in touch. Yeah. I'll absolutely nah, love Fred, that, mate. He's signed up. We've already had a chat about this. And yeah, awesome. He'd love to meet your dad as well. Yeah, so we'll fucking sort that out, We'll mate. have a bit of a party in here, I reckon. Oh, we'll get us all on. Yeah, this is going to be not? good. Yeah, right. But yeah, so Fred, he was over. Yeah. Like at our home back over there and... I'm just like, mate, we've got to, we've got to watch this movie, yeah, right? And yeah. I'm going to give you a bit of a history lesson here. Like, yeah. this is, <laughs> I love it, it gives you everything. It's yeah, got excitement, yeah, yeah. takes you through a story, yeah. sad, yeah. happy, like, you experience everything. Yeah. Yeah, right, right, right. We're sitting on the couch, we're about 20 minutes in, he's just on his phone. Oh, no. I was like, bro. Fred, watch the te- come watch on, telly, man. mate. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> he's like, what? I'm like, give me your phone. He's like, no. Nah. I said, give me your fucking phone. <laughs> he's like, no, 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 I'll get off it. Yeah. I was like, bro, please just. Give me half an hour of your time. That's all I'm asking. Turn your fucking phone off yeah, and we'll watch it. Yeah. Righto. So phone's off. Mm. Start the movie again. Yeah, I used to start I'm from like, the beginning. Yeah. I'm not joking. I was taking mm. it back. But I'm like, right, watch the start. Yeah. This is what we're in. Mm. So we're sitting there. We're watching it. Not talking. Just yeah, yeah. sitting there watching it. And we're about probably half an hour, 40 minutes in, mate. We mm. barely spoke two, three words, right? Yeah, right. And then I was like, ah, fuck it. I'm going to turn this off. Right. And he goes, no, nah, don't. Don't fucking don't, don't, don't turn it off. <laughs> and then he's like, and we're sitting there, I'm like, well, you want to watch it now? He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm watching it, I'm watching it. So the movie goes for about two hours, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. And we're watching it, the whole thing, mate. Both of us have got tears in our eyes yeah. in certain parts. Yeah. We get to the end of it and he goes, that is in the top three of the best movies <laughs> I've ever watched. Yeah, yeah. If you were to ask him right now, top three, I guarantee you will tell you the same right. story. Mate, absolute crap. So, and the best part is one of our Aussie icons. Yeah. He no, it is a, it's a special movie and yeah. um, it's one that my dad showed me oh, when I was only young, yeah, you know, okay. so... I used to love watching it then, and I still love watching it now. Yeah, and good shit. Talking about it, I'll probably go home and watch it. Oh, 100%. It's a cracker. I, I haven't seen it in the last probably 12 months, but yeah. I, I over-exaggerated when I said 100, but I've probably genuinely seen it 50 times. Yeah. Like, uh, who's the red-headed fella? What? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Funny as dude. <laughs> he is he funny. Is hilarious. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it is a good show. I'm and longer until your insides are out. Yeah, your yeah. outsides are in. Yeah, it's so, so oh, good. Mate. It is so good. And I am I'm a big movie buff and I froth what? on old movies. Yep. Have you ever seen Point Break? The old oh, school one? The surfer one? Yeah. Yeah, years ago, man. I haven't watched it in a very, very long time. Aha. Uh-huh. I was wondering who that was there. Patrick Swayze, Keanu Reeves, and that's like the president. Like the mask that he robs all the banks with. Yeah, right. Like, I love it that much that yeah. I had to have it on my body. Yeah, fair um, enough. I was looking before and I was thinking, what movie. is that? Cracker movie. Bro. Yeah, right. I'd, honestly, I'd... 91 though, so it's old. Like, is 1991 is, is, right. is, you know, well I remember the old, born. like the, the cover was like a, it was literally just a big wave, was it not or not? Yeah, uh, the 2015 one, the remake was like a big wave and old mates surfing it. But yeah. the, 2000, uh, the 1991 one is like... On like on the rock wall with like a wave behind it, and then like the the four ex presidents like standing there with their shotguns, and it's got I need to watch this. Mate, right. it's it's a hectic movie, and I don't even know why. I don't yeah. know why I love it, but it yeah. is. And I don't surf. Yeah, I've tried. Yeah, I suck, mate. I think I've surfed once in my life, and I've lived thirty minutes from the beach yeah, my whole life. I'm too heavy. Like, yeah, and like the only board, like the thick. I had to get like a fifty liter board right. to hold my. Weight, yeah, but because it was so thick, I couldn't duck dive. Uh huh. So I was Guess like, getting smashed oh, mate, I was time. paddling and I was gassing out in like three minutes flat. Yeah. I was like, this is not for me. Nah, I'll happily just beach myself up on the yeah, <laughs> yeah. just watch, <laughs> watch the boys go. Yeah, actually, no, it's, it's funny. Do you have seen Fast and the Furious? Yep, all of them. Well, the, the latest one, shit, mind you, never seen it. Yes. Oh, bro, I wouldn't waste your time. I got, I got to, I got to just to, to say I've seen so it. Tell you're gonna be disappointed. Well, I was filthy. Well, is, is it the end? Or is it? No, nah. it's more. It's there's still more to come. They should have stopped at bloody seven. Oh mate, yeah, hundred percent. That's my opinion. It's just it's shit now. Well, the first movie you think of the first, very first one, uh, 
bunch of robbers yep. uh, in their cars. A uh, young detective goes in, gets too close to them, yep. ends up helping them. Yep. Story, uh, movie ends. Point Break is exactly the same. Yeah, right. It's young detective. Don't think, go giving it away. I'm oh, going to so watch it. Oh, you have, you have seen it? Years ago. Oh, mate, right, I can't right, even okay. remember the story. I won't one. reveal yeah, it. Yeah, I won't gonna, reveal it. I'll, I'll, I want to give it a watch. Yeah, it's I'll so give it a watch. And I'm just a big Keanu fan and a big Swayze fan. Yeah. Swayze was taken Keanu to. Keanu Reeves, he was, was he not in Matrix? Yeah, that's him. Yeah, yeah see, that's I used him. to watch Matrix too back in the day. Banger, mate. Not bad at all yeah, either. I love the Matrix. <laughs> but Swayze took too soon. He was he was taken in 2009. Was he? Yeah, I think he had lung cancer or something. Oh, I sort of remember that actually. Yeah, because he was, I think he was a chain smoker. What was the movie? Oh, Dirty Dancing. Oh, yes, yeah. that's him. Yeah. But yeah. But she comes running up yeah, to him yeah. and picks her up. That's going to be on your wedding day come oh. April. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But you know what? I would. Mrs. Hates Dancing. Yeah? Hates it. Ah, right. And it's not a sit-down wedding either. It's like more cocktail, cocktail style. That's a go. But she's like, no, nah, no first dances. Yeah. She gets too embarrassed. Yeah, right. Oh, mate, your wedding, you're inviting the people that you want to see anyway. Yeah. Do it all, I'm telling mm, you. Yeah. Best day of your life. Oh, I can't wait. I really cannot. It's going to be fun. And it's big. Like, it's going to be quite a big wedding. Yeah. Um, I think it's about like 155 people yep. coming. Because I, I hate saying no to people. Yeah. Like, how, how do you say, like, yes to this auntie that you're close with, yeah. but no to that auntie you're it's not close with? It's hard for me. Like, I end up just looking at how it is. Who's in my life currently? Mm. Who makes an effort with me? Yeah. Family or not? Yeah. Yep. Um, unfortunately, I do have a big family, yep. but I couldn't have everyone. We had 114 people yeah. and like, yeah, the people that we had, yeah. I'd have them again. Sure. Um, I haven't actually got to a point. Usually people go, oh, I wouldn't have this person. I wouldn't have that person. Fortunately enough, everyone that was invited, yeah. we're still friends with. So, yeah, good stuff. Um, and we've still stuff. got a part of our life. So we'd always have each other, you know. So, um, but no, nah, weddings, mate, it's other than me racing and all the rest of it, it's it's something I do enjoy going to. It's a it's an awesome day out. You get to oh. celebrate with people you care about and yeah. and how much they love each other. Weddings like it's, it's is meant. by far my favourite event. Yeah, I got one this weekend coming. Oh, yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. So Good stuff. Danielle and Birdo, we're um I'm keen for that one and mm, enjoy yeah. it. Enjoy it. It is going to be a nice night. Yeah, good stuff. Well, mate, really appreciate you coming. Ah, on, thanks Josh. for coming, bro. Oh, sorry, Lex, for having me, bro. I was just um I spoke to you before. I know I've had a couple of messages mm. during the year, mm. but. What you're doing here is is awesome. I know we didn't speak too much about Speedway mm. tonight, but we definitely touched on a few mm. things. But any any talk of the sport mm. is great. Yep. Um, you know, you're getting a good following. I know there's a fair few Heat 1 shirts yep. kicking about yeah, over the UK is. nowadays. So. That's so humbling, man. Like, yeah, it's special, froth, mate. When I see that, yeah. it just really... I Makes sit, you want to go out before and start on the computer right, again. Right, 100%. And uh, like, I sit in my chair and I see, uh, you know, a Heat 1 uh, shirt at Sheffield. I'm just like, that's fucking so... That's me. That's so cool, bro. Yeah. I love it. No, love it's it. awesome, mate. Like, always you, you and Anders is yeah. doing a great job. It's and, good fun, mate. Yeah, I know, I know you do all the behind the scenes and things like that and... And has come and give you a chat too, but yeah, like both you's doing what you're doing, mm. how you started it, mate. It's that's unreal, and I'm I'm glad I've got to become become part of it. Appreciate it, mate. And TW, I I, I don't give him enough credit. He yeah. he does. He comes and he he gives some real good insight. Yeah, right? to be honest, man, I I I listened flat out early on. I think yeah. first five six episodes. Yeah, and then I've drifted away a little bit in the yeah. middle there. I can't. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and oh, say I'm a, a weekly listener, mm. but. I do try and whatever I'm driving along in the car, mm. and I feel like I can when I don't have people ringing me or I've yeah, got to make phone calls, and I don't want to l- listen to Luke Combs. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, on, mate. Yeah, hundred. You're on. So uh, I have definitely listened to a fair few of them now. Um, I'm looking forward to the one that Ando comes out with. They'll be yes, a good listen. Well, that will actually by the time this is finished, uh, Ando's will be released before this one. Yep. So yep. and uh, it was pre. Uh, GP posty race. Yeah. So uh, he didn't know he was going to come off in crash corner, but uh, ah. he ended up doing it. So, yeah. <laughs> anyways. Yep. All right, there guys. You really Thank appreciate you. you tuning in. Josh, pleasure, mate. Thanks, bro. Take care, guys. Cheers. Wilcher's got it in the back. Fantastic ride from Todd Wilcher. That was inspirational.